Mimecast, which offers email management and security for businesses, went public on the NASDAQ today after pricing its shares at $10 and raising $78 million. The company was founded in London in 2003 and boasts over 15,000 enterprise customers in 100 plus countries. We sat down with CEO Peter Bauer to learn what's in store for Mimecast. You raised about $80 million in this IPO and this offering. What are you going to do with the proceeds? So we're really excited about the market opportunity ahead of us. And that's on a global basis as we're, we're in many markets around the world. But in particular here in the North American market, where we see a huge opportunity to grow. And we're really investing in sales and marketing and building out our presence with channel partners in, in North America. We have about 7,000 customers in North America today. And we're, we're really focused on growing that and serving the North American market well. What we're also doing is continuing to invest and grow our R&D capabilities and build on this innovative platform that we have so that we can help solve more, custom, more problems for our customers within the same architecture and within this very important context of managing their email and their unstructured data better for them. I see, and there are a lot of IPOs right now. Um, you're on the same day as Square and Match and some others that aren't tech, but why, why now? Well, we, we feel uh, very excited to be uh, on the stage with, with other companies like that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great day. There's been a lot of excitement around it for us. We have worked to develop the rigor in our company to prepare us to operate as a successful co public company for a long time. And we felt that this is an important step for us because what we do for customers is mission critical. And we work for some of the most information sensitive um, uh, organizations in the world. And what we want to do is, is leverage the opportunity as a public company to demonstrate the robustness of our business, the rigor with which we run it, and really help to give them confidence and to give many more companies that we would like to serve the confidence in us as an organization. And we feel that being a public company gives us the stage to, to do that and to demonstrate that. It's a competitive landscape. And so what are you doing to convince your clients and then also investors now why you're better than the competition? So I think that's a, that's a key point is that the security landscape is pretty competitive. But email security has been one of those areas that has been a little bit neglected. The vendor community has not really continued to innovate and many corporates have not kept email on the top of their list of, of items to pay attention to from a security point of view. And so we've seen with several of these high profile breaches how email has really been the Achilles heel in their security strategies and attackers have been able to successfully deliver malware through weaponized attachments or use spear phishing techniques to, to penetrate an organization and get behind the other expensive defensive that they've put in place. Yeah, and I've talked to other security experts that say while security technology is getting better, so are the hackers. The hackers are getting a lot smarter and more sophisticated in their attacks. How do you keep outsmarting them? Well, that's a really interesting question because it is some, to some extent an arms race. And I think what we have is a long history of working in this space and developing a really sophisticated security algorithm for protecting email. And we've played this game over years in terms of the cat and mouse between virus writers and, and virus signature writers. And then some of the newer techniques that have come out for protecting against zero day attacks and targeted attacks like sandboxing, which is an important component in the security architecture, again have proven to be fallible in some cases as malware writers are at least as crafty as some of the VW software engineers to be able to write software that can detect whether they're being assessed and behave differently under those circumstances. So we as a company have had to come up with additional innovative technologies and layers of protection that can protect customers against these kind of evolving threats and, and, uh, and dynamic uh, plans of attack that, uh, that adversaries will come up with. From the NASDAQ, this is Katie Roof for TechCrunch.